everybody welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome to my channel and my name is Vicki how you doing today I'm going to be doing a review slash demo for the new Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation and I've had this foundation for about a month now and I've been testing it out off and on and I kind of wanted to give you guys my opinion on it the first time I used this foundation I didn't have my camera to film a first impressions I'm just going to do a whole review on it let you guys know what I think um, and hopefully you guys kind of get an idea of what I think about it of course my opinion is my opinion it doesn't have anything to do with your opinion so you can you know test this out for yourself and see how you like it but this is my personal experience with it. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you do give me a thumbs up, we're gonna go ahead and get right into it. I have nothing on my face, so let's work. I'm going to be using my priming moisturizer by Glossier, and this is of course my favorite. It's a moisturizer, but it also helps to prime the skin for your makeup. It's very lightweight. It doesn't make me oily. It actually helps me from getting more oily because it keeps my skin hydrated underneath my makeup so that my skin isn't working harder to um, keep from being too dry. Like always, I'm not going to wear any mattifying primer because I want you guys to see how the foundation looks on its own without being uh, primed or anything like that. This is what the foundation looks like. It comes in a bottle like this. I will do a close up for you guys so you guys can see it. But it has a pump on the top, which is great because we never want to waste too much product. Using this foundation after a month, I've kind of learned how to work with it so I'm going to be talking you guys through this and as opposed to putting it all on and then talking about it later. I'm not going to take it on my beauty blender directly I'm going to apply it to my face in sections. The reason why I'm going to do this is because this foundation dries very very quickly and it's almost impossible to work with once it started drying so you're going to want to apply the foundation to one section of the face first and then immediately blend that out. I'm going to use a beauty blender. I would suggest that you use a beauty blender with this foundation because it is not um, forgiving. So I'm blending this foundation down my neckline and into my hairline as best as possible because first of all, as you can see, the foundation is a lot lighter than my skin, like half a shade lighter than my skin when it's first applied. Now. Let me just tell y'all something about this foundation. 30 seconds to a minute, it's gonna dry and it's going to change colors. Nope. <laughs> That's like the, the nicest way I can put it. It's gonna oxidize. So it doesn't change colors like drastically, it just goes down a shade and it goes from being yellow to a little bit more of a peachy undertone. So this is one full pump. I wouldn't suggest using a brush with this foundation unless you want a super, super full coverage. But like I said, this foundation is not forgiving. So if you apply too much in one area, it's gonna cake up on you and then it'll crease. It just looks a lot better and more skin-like with a beauty blender. Um, as opposed to like other foundations that I use that are a little more on the natural finish side, this foundation dries down to a powdery finish. It does look like you have something on your face. Nope. However, I feel like the beauty blender really does a great job of helping it to go on a little bit more smooth so that it does look a little bit more skin-like than it would if you used a brush. Now that my foundation's on, you guys can see the color. This is 8.75, I forgot to mention. This is the shade 8.75, but this is one of those foundations that you do need to go to the store to buy. I would not recommend buying this online. I would recommend that you go to the store and get either shade matched by a professional there or you get multiple shades. And by multiple shades, I don't mean by multiple bottles. I mean, get samples. Kind of compare and contrast, see which ones look best on you. You know, put some on your jawline or your neck area. Put um, two different shades and kind of compare them because otherwise you're just gonna have to be guessing. And I don't want you to be guessing with a, you know, $40 foundation. Other than the color, I love the matte finish. I feel like the matte finish works well for me in the summertime. It doesn't give you a dewy finish, but it doesn't make you dry. The coverage is very full, so you really don't need to do a whole lot of concealing, all of that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that anyway, because I'm extra. I will come back once I have a full face on, and I will let you guys see the rest of my face. And I will also be 
um, giving you guys a wear test. So right now it is, what time is it? 4.37 p.m. And I'm gonna come back before I take my makeup off so you guys can see the finished product. It is now six o'clock. I'm gonna be back in about three to four hours to give you guys the verdict on the foundation, how it holds up. This is my finished look, by the way. Um, if you guys wanna know what's on my lips, I do, I just did a Viva Glam Ariana 2 lip swatch video showing you guys um, what I think about the lipstick. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it is 11.19. Um, I waited a little later specifically to show you guys how this foundation held up. I'm oily in my nose area, but other than that, it's looking pretty good. See some separation some movement. I was touching this area of my face here because I have a breakout here. I've actually been breaking out a lot in this area lately and I'm not sure why but it's been really dry and itchy. But other than that my foundation has stayed pretty well. I do have creasing in my laugh lines. Yeah but no melting, no complete sliding off of the face. And the oiliness is controlled pretty well for me to not have on a primer. I did do a little bit of dabbing here um, with my finger but other than that those things are not abnormal for it to be seven hours of wear I think this is pretty decent like I've said I've been trying this for a month and this is about this is about how long it takes for this foundation to start creasing and getting oily and things like that so considering how oily my skin is and how animated I am with my face I think that this is holding up pretty well I can attest to the waterproofness because I wore this foundation in 100 degree weather um, when I was in Texas. I was sweating profusely and the foundation did not move. At that point I did realize that this foundation really was a true waterproof foundation. So as far as longevity goes it does last a long time. It's been seven hours and it hasn't slid off of my face completely. I like how it dries to a powder finish but it is very thick. I mean, this is a very lightweight foundation, don't get me wrong. I don't feel like I have a lot on my face. It's not a foundation that you can wear every day. If you don't like the nope. full face look, then you're not gonna like this. It's a full glam foundation, uh, so you, you're pretty much getting full coverage every time. Of course, you can make it look great, sure, but it doesn't look like skin. It reminds me a lot of the Becca foundation, but the Becca foundation, uh, it feels a little better on the skin. I don't know. I, I like that one better. I, I feel like this one's good, but I feel like that one's better. I like this foundation. I'm not, don't get me wrong, I like it. Would I buy it again? Probably not, but I'm gonna use it because I bought it. It's not my favorite. It's not my all time favorite foundation. I feel like you can get the same effect from the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. Uh, I think it's absolutely wonderful for a drugstore foundation. It's really great. Just the shade range isn't as extensive. But then again, this shade range is hecka confusing. So, you know, what can you do? Is it worth the money? Yeah, I would say that. You don't, you need a whole lot, so you won't run out really quickly. So I don't think that it's a waste of money. I will say, I think the foundation didn't go on as good because, like, I can see where it's kind of, like, not sitting well on my skin. And let me tell you what that could be. That could be the hair on my face. And I'm not saying that I have a beard or anything, but you know you have hair on your face. Even women, you have hair on your face. I have I have shaved my face a couple times um, with the little, you know, eyebrow razor thing. I just kind of shaved off the little fuzzies, the little peach fuzzies. Um, and that helps my foundation go on a lot better. So if you've tried that before, or if you're thinking about trying it, I think you should try it, be careful. But I think you should try it because it'll help your foundation go on a lot better and you won't notice that your foundation is not going on smoothly and evenly. I'm going to do some comparisons so you guys can see other foundations and what it looks like compared to those foundations. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. As you can see, this is one pump and it's going to be the fullest coverage of all the foundations I'm going to show you. It's very full coverage. It does oxidize a lot though. It's going to turn from this yellow color to an orange color as you will see as I continue on with the swatches. But it's very matte, very full coverage. It is pretty waterproof and I'll show you guys that in a second. The L'Oreal Infallible Foundation, not as full coverage, is a demi matte, semi full coverage foundation. It took me two layers of this foundation to match the same coverage as the Urban Decay. But I will say that it's very much so a comfortable foundation to wear and it's definitely a little bit darker so it matches me in the summertime a lot better.
This is the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream. This foundation is $40 as well, but I would say go with this one. If you're gonna spend $40, it's much more comfortable on the skin. I feel like this foundation has more of an olive undertone, which matches my undertone better. And it's good for all skin types, but it still has a matte full coverage effect like the Urban Decay. This is the Max Studio Fix Fluid. It's a lot cheaper, it's 28 bucks. It has SPF 15, so it is gonna oxidize on you just like the Urban Decay. So I feel like this, these two are similar. The MAC one is definitely not as full coverage. You would need two layers of this foundation to achieve the same coverage as the Urban Decay. So that's probably why it's not as expensive. I wiped these down with a baby wipe. As you can see, the Urban Decay one lasted the longest. I definitely wouldn't wear the Urban Decay foundation every day, but as far as wearability, longevity, waterproofness goes, the Urban Decay does take the prize. For a long wearing type event, Urban Decay might be something you wanna consider. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the foundation, please let me know. If you guys have any suggestions for foundations that I should try, I will try to do those for you. But other than that, that's it. I will talk to you guys in my next video, okay?